if you ask a lawyer and like what's the role of a board the, the technical answer is that it's to hire and fire the ceo the reality in startups is the absolute opposite the role of a board in a startup is to help the company succeed and you see many early stage founders who spend too much of their time trying to justify their position as a ceo in the company not trying to move the ball forward they spend more time on victory laps and shouting about kind of all the successes and there's a time for that it's important but really this is a unique form where many of the most invested constituents behind the company are spending time together rather than spending time on updates spend the time on what are the critical issues facing the company and spending time discussing that so flip the flip the board meeting don't spend time on the updates highlight the big stuff and then focus the the vast majority of the time on these big issues and be a much better board meeting and there'll be a much better company. So I think when I when I was running the early board meeting to Trulia, I fell into the trap of really just like highlighting the positive in the company and just like, okay, you know, your first page would be like, what's going on with the business? And I think one board member just called out, so, so everything's going really well. And I, I thought for a minute, no, actually there's um, a dozen things that are like challenging or broken or need to fix. And it was just a really good call out. And so after that board meeting, I literally kind of the first page, I, I I just split it down the middle and so on the left hand side it was like what's going well and an equal dedicated space was things were going badly. And I, you know, often get that advice to, to founders that I work with. If a founder is only talking about what's going on well, I don't disbelieve them, but I, I hope that they are paranoid enough to know that there are a million things that can be done better. And so dedicating those two, you know, one half for each of those is it's just a it's a helpful construct to be able to make sure you dedicate time to the good and the bad. No board member really wants the founder to be spending weeks of their lives preparing for board meetings at early stage companies because they should be like running the business, not spending their time communicating. So as much as possible, reusing existing dashboards. Um, presentation doesn't need to look amazing, but the content you know, should be illuminating and consistent and understandable. Uh, internal data or kind of screenshots will go back to the last board meeting and kind of updating data. So it's in a consistent format. That's, you know, that's what you expect and to keep it simple. You just don't want, you don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. It's a lot of work and it can be con too much context switching for investors who are, perhaps haven't had an update from the company in the month or two since the prior board meeting. I think up front is really, you know, agenda setting. What do you want to achieve in this meeting? What does the CEO want to achieve from this meeting? You know, a quick update on what's going on with the business. Hopefully the participants have read and digested that ahead of time, the materials have been sent out. And that could be anywhere between zero and 30% of the time, if everyone's fully prepared. And then really getting into the one or two substantive issues the questions what are what is you know supporting materials it could be other presenters coming in really thinking through what are the the forks in the road or the, the key questions and then making sure that within that whether it's the update or whether it's the the discussion the human component is is a key part of that i love to see an org chart just to like okay how does this all fit together these are names but all charts for small companies are kind of non-existent and uh, quite fluid but for mid-stage companies it's helpful just to understand how everyone fits together some of the failures i see you know certainly being defensive i think uh, you know the board is almost always there to be very helpful and to try to sort of guide you in the right path so really just trying you know trying to be constructive, not defensive. Some of that's on the CEO, sometimes that's on the board member, but in terms of how to approach it, but really trying to be a collaborative and positive in the approach. Some failure modes are also in the way that founders can only focus on the positive. I think a lot of, so much about the success of a business comes down to the team and the people. You know, often can be that board decks are, uh, have a heavy financial orientation, really take out the human component, which is like, okay, what's the organization? Who's joined? Who's left? Why have they left? Who are you looking for? What's the list of the next five people we want to hire? You know, that is often fundamental to the success of the business. And it's often an afterthought, but elevating the people side of things can be really important. I also like to see at the right size, multiple speakers in a, in a board meeting. Not only is that interesting for board members to kind of hear from and calibrate some of the team, 
but it's incredibly motivating for executives to speak to board members or, or team or team members to speak to the board and present their work. It's a very it's a very motivating experience and something that at the right time would I would really encourage. Running a good board meeting is like building a muscle. You want to build this muscle that you can grow over time. And I think there's a perception that can be like, okay, the, this is a huge lift to set up this board meeting. But you can have board meetings that are like 30 minutes long that you're, for early stage companies, the team is small, the customer numbers are small, revenue is small. It's like, but this is kind of the stuff that is on my mind and I need help with this, these one or two decisions. So to the extent that you can start to kind of keep it simple and then every board meeting, hopefully the business gets bigger and more complicated. You expand on that, but just start in that muscle and communicating effectively. And that muscle is not only useful to communicate to your board, but it's actually a muscle you start to develop to speak to other investors, raising a future round, use it to speak to prospective employees, use it to speak to management team. And so this doesn't require a lot of work, but just this muscle building is a really important skill for any founding team and any CEO of any major company. The worst thing about board meetings is often the name. <laughs>